What is up, F and True followers, wrestling fans, and members of the YWC? GC Styles here. And Brian Crazy. And we are the F and Brand of Wrestling and Entertainment here on YouTube.com with a WrestleMania 28 review. WrestleMania went off moments ago, and we have a lot to talk about in just a little bit of time. We want to be able to get this all down to you guys within 15 minutes. So we're just going to give you guys out the quick results real quick. Just briefly talk about some of the matches and then close out the video. Yes, and if me and JC Styles have time a lot during the week, we want to sit down and actually get to the meat and bones of this pay-per-view once we get to watch it on the replay and get to analyze the matches in a little bit more detail. But that is to come. Tonight, we are going to give you guys a quick recap, talk about some of the highlights, talk about... There wasn't many lowlights, I, I'm not going to lie. There was only one or two spots that maybe we would have liked to see a little bit different. And then we are going to uh, close out this video and get it up. We want to hear your guys' thoughts. That's what makes this whole thing so great. You get to hear our opinions. We want to hear yours. So we start off the show. The pre-show starts at 6.30 on WWE.com. And Primo and Epico are defending the tag team titles against the Uso brothers and also the team Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd, who recently formed on an episode of WWE Superstars. This is a great match. Yeah, the match was overall was very good. It was a lot, a very good way to to advertise the pay per view for. It was basically almost like how the free for all used to be back in the '90s when we had WWE free for all, which was a half an hour before the pay per view went on the air. Which then they added an additional half hour to that, and it became Sunday Night Heat. It was just an overall great match. It was definitely a lot of people that were combing the internet looking. Oh, triple threat tag team match right before WrestleMania goes on the air. I'm gonna watch that, and if the if the, if the match interests me, I'll check out the rest of the card and I'll order the pay per view. We see Epico and Primo pick successfully defend the tag team championships and retain. So we're gonna go right into it. Into the start exactly. of WrestleMania. We start off WrestleMania 28 with America the Beautiful. Lillian Garcia looks absolutely beautiful, and she is in the ring singing the song. Then we see the Jets fly over, and we begin the 28th annual WrestleMania event. This promises to be one of the greatest WrestleManias of all time. And I'll be honest, we just finished watching this pay-per-view, and it lived up to its hype. It was one of the best WrestleManias I've ever seen, if not... Top five, easily. Oh, yeah. if, if not even top three. It probably topped the last three WrestleManias. And 27 was a pretty good event. 26 was not a bad event either. And 25 wasn't a bad event either. I mean, you go back in WrestleMania history, the last few events have been very good to the WWE. And the WWE has been very good to the wrestling fans, trying to give them what they are looking for. So we start off the night with the world's heavyweight title. We see the Celtic Warrior, the Great White, the 2012 Royal Rumble winner Sheamus going against the American Dragon, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan came out with really nice uh, ring attire tonight with his dragon symbol on it, matching knee pads and tights. Uh, looks like brand new attire for WrestleMania. Unfortunately, we did not get to see the match that everybody wanted to see. Last year, this was a dark match for the United States title, Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus. It's pretty interesting where they've advanced to in the year. It was almost like a year ago, if you look back, it's almost like it was destined to be. Yeah. That they were building these two for the main event spot by having them work together then. And if it was, very smart on WWE to start planning it out that early ahead. We unfortunately didn't get to see too much of a match, though. Daniel Bryan goes over to give AJ a kiss. As soon as he turns his head, he eats a bro kick. One, two, three. Sheamus is your new World's Heavyweight Champion. I couldn't say it any better than myself. Then we move into the Kane versus Randy Orton, which had very little buildup, but a tremendous backstory. Uh, as we all know, the backstory was uh, Randy Orton and Kane had a match on SmackDown last year, right before Kane took his leave for a little while. And pretty much uh, at the end of the match, we see them two shake hands. Kane said that it made himself look soft and look like a human being, and that wasn't what he was all about. This was also something to fuel his whole uh, Kane resurrected. And it was a phenomenal match. I'm not going to lie. It could have been a little bit better in some parts of the match. But we see a the bell ring. We saw some really good uh, wrestling maneuvers. We saw an attempt at a, uh, at a Randy Orton punt. We also seen a choke slam off the second rope. And, I mean, Kane is one of the most athletic big men in the WWE. We've never seen a big man fly off the ropes like we've seen Kane. And it was an incredible match. Like JC said, there were some great spots. And Kane recently came off a loss at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view against John Cena. And what did that mean for the whole resurrected Kane character? If he lost to Randy Orton tonight, I had a feeling it kind of would be the end of Kane's resurrection. But, in fact, Kane did pick up the victory over Randy Orton. And the big red monster continues continues to terrorize the WWE. What is going to happen 
Uh, are these two going to come face to face again? Is there going to be some sort of rematch, or will there be a new angle with Kane starting either tomorrow night on Raw, Friday night on SmackDown, or in weeks to come? Yes. Uh, we also see a backstage comedy segment. We see Santino, Mick Foley, and Captain Kirk from the Deadliest Catch uh, interrupted while they're eating lobster. Uh, you know, he, Ron Simmons walks in at the in, in proper time. He walks in, he sees an elbow drop being dropped on a lobster claw. Santino doing the cobra and Mick Foley trying to put the, Mr. S uh, the mandible claw, Mr. Sacco, on the lobster. He comes in and says, damn. Santino throws his lobster halfway across the room. And then we move into Justin Roberts uh, introducing and welcoming the National Guard troops that are in attendance to WrestleMania. Then we see a pretty good Intercontinental Championship match. We see uh, Cody Rhodes defend against the Big Show, and Big Show silenced his critics and finally got his WrestleMania win and picked up his first ever Intercontinental Championship. Yes, we saw the match conclude when Cody went from the beautiful disaster kick. He ends up hitting one. He goes to hit it again. This is where he pretty much gets speared out of midair by the Big Show. The Big Show takes him down. Cody gets back to a vertical base, and then blow, the weapon of mass destruction, knockout, blow, one, two, three. The Big Show is your new Intercontinental Champion, and now the Big Show has held every current singles championship in the WWE. We go into a video package hyping the Divas Tag Team Match, and then we go into the Divas um, Tag Team Match. We see Maria Menounos from Extra team together with Kelly Kelly to go against the team of the Glamazon Beth Phoenix and Eve Torres. Now, if you guys have followed us for the last few weeks or followed us for some time, J.C. Styles in our predictions video mentioned that he would have really liked to see a four-way, fatal four-way dance for the Divas title yes. or see a one-on-one -on -one Divas contest. Unfortunately, that's not what we got. But Maria Menounos, with two broken ribs, fractured ribs, cracked ribs, whatever have you, it's a painful injury. She had a lot of heart. She went out there. She attempted to go on the second rope, and she tried her best. And all we have to do as fans is give credit where credit yeah. is due. We uh, see them pick up the win again, which means she has two pinfall victories over Beth Phoenix, the Divas champion. We then see Max Stryker backstage talking with Shawn Michaels in his referee shirt, and he basically says, I hold the power to end an era in my hand. We then see Justin Roberts announce that there is a new uh, record for attendance record for Sun Life Stadium with 78,363. We get a big celebration, big pyro. Then we see Justin uh, Roberts introduce the returning uh, Jim Ross to announce the Hell in the Cell end of an era match between Triple H and The Undertaker with Shawn Michaels, a special guest referee. Inside now, Hell in a Cell. Yes. I said that. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, I thought, I thought, I thought. <laughs> Bonk. Sorry. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of rumors going about a week and a half ago that we wouldn't see JR. Undertaker extended the olive branch, telling Vince that he would like Jim Ross to come back and call the match. We see Jim Ross sporting a nice little goatee, and we hear uh, Jerry the King Lawler say that he looks like Jim Ross's idol, John Wayne. And I could see certain similarities, and it was just a good nostalgic factor to see. Jim Ross at WrestleMania. We got to see Jim Ross compete last year at WrestleMania. We got to see him come back and announce for 26 and 25. It was a good nostalgia factor because for pretty much all of the 90s, even early um, 2000s, so mid 2000s, we saw Jerry the King Lawler and Jim Ross announce Monday Night Raw. And we just moved into a fantastic end of an era match. Oh, it was an absolutely fantastic match. We saw sheer physicality for both competitors involved. We saw multiple chair shots. We saw the sledgehammer brought into play. We saw the Hell's Gate locked in multiple times. We saw tombstone pile drivers. We saw pedigrees. We saw choke slams. Sweet chip music on Undertaker followed by a pedigree. Exactly. We saw... Uh, Triple H busted open with his eye bleeding. We saw multiple welts on The Undertaker's back. It was an incredible, incredible match. I was at the on the edge of my seat, excuse me, throughout this contest. And to be honest, the card was fantastic, but this is the only match on the entire card that had me that eager to know what the outcome was going to be. I'm a huge Undertaker fan, and if you guys have followed the show, I'm a huge fan of Triple H, the game as well. But at the end of the day, I, this fan wanted to see The Undertaker win, and I got what I wanted. The Undertaker went 20-0, and 0, and I can't wait. Hopefully he will make an appearance at next year's WrestleMania 29 in the New York metropolitan region. Where hopefully me and J.C. Styles uh, will be representing the effing brand of wrestling entertainment at WrestleMania. If the cards fall into place, hopefully. Of we're, course. Not, we're not tuning our own horns here. There's a lot of 
things I that think, variables that go into play. I think the overall aspect of this match was the great storytelling we saw in the match. I mean, we saw Triple H do vicious, wild chair shots on The Undertaker, and Shawn Michaels was trying to protect The Undertaker, but also, be like, you know, you know he's not going to stop. You know he's not going to quit. And he was like, well, you either end it or I'll end it. You want to show compassion. I'm not. That's not me. And we just seen these two guys go at it. And we also hear Undertaker at one point in the match say, if you end it, I'll hurt you. And it was just an overall great match. But we see Undertaker, like you said, go 20-0. and Undertaker still undefeated at WrestleMania. We're going to go well, to the... Well, real quick, guys. What we're going to do is we're going to get this first part uploaded for you guys. But we want you to check back in just a few minutes for the second part of this video. We want to get up some of these matches so you guys can find out what happened just in case if you weren't able to view this pay-per-view. And also to begin to leave your thoughts. The second part will be up shortly. Thank you for being loyal fans of the FM brand of wrestling and entertainment. And please check back in just a few minutes.